So this talk today is the talk that I gave last week with some variations at Unity Village for part of the SDS. I was there for the whole week. It's called um, Skills Demonstration Seminar. I didn't forget, I was just pausing. So I was seeing if you knew, <laughs> see if you still remembered. <laughs> so it's um, like all the other in LUT intensive weeks, it's intense uh, by definition. So there were three previous ses weekly sessions that have lasted throughout the year. And most of you have been very gracious to me and uh, been part of this journey with me. So part of the SDS week is to take a test, a pretty significant uh, effort to take this test, and then and do a presentation in front, of, uh, in front of three ministers as well as the classmates. There were 10 of us in class. So there's 10 new LUTs in their uh, spiritual centers this Sunday morning. So I thank God for that. So again, this class, I gave a version of this. I've added a little bit just to uh, embellish it for us, to make it for us. So, um, and it's a, the title, the, the topics are drawn at random. So one of the members in uh, uh, Unity Worldwide Ministries draws these topics for each one of us students and the topics just seem uh, amazingly fit, each one of us. Um, and you'll see how that, as I uh, continue talking, you'll see how that fits. So spiritual law and the power of order. The, each of the topics that we had to present was one of the 12 powers of man. Uh, if you've been around Unity, you know uh, Charles Fillmore wrote, this, wrote the book, uh, 12 Powers of Man in 1930. It was published in 1930. And uh, the 12, it was republished then with uh, Charles and Cor Fillmore later, uh, much later, uh, to uh, reemphasize the importance of this teaching that's in the Unity movement. The, the 12 powers is very important metaphysically. It's a very important metaphysical concept in unity and we use it um, a lot. Charles Fillmore was a visionary and a futurist. And we know Charles Fillmore is the co-founder of unity. And by the way, that's not just, we're taught to do that, to give credit to authors and all that. So we're taught to do that. So it's a good thing to do. And then plus Charles is important to our movement as well as Myrtle Fillmore co-founder of Unity. So Charles, uh, he, the subcon he wrote, the subconscious realm in man has 12 great centers of action, 12 preceding egos or identities. So in addition to this new, uh, this 12 power concept, uh, one of Charles Fillmore's uh, major contributions in New Thought was his unique development of metaphysical Bible interpretations. And we'll get to that in uh, another study or a presentation at some point. So to understand the 12 powers, you have to know that there are 12 expressions of one power, the Christ within each of us. We are not the powers. We use the powers or the abilities. We are the Christ. We represent the Christ nature in us. And Jesus, we know, was the perfect man demonstrated. He demonstrated the powers and, and um, that's what we mean by the Christ. When we say Christ, we mean the fully awakened human, human being, the same as Buddha mind or higher self, the indwelling Lord Shiva, the Atman, just to use words from other uh, traditions. But it's the Christ. Uh, and these uh, powers are, you can see on, you can't really see those, faith, strength, judgment, love, power, imagination, understanding, will, order, zeal, renunciation, and life. So it's a state of consciousness within us that is completely one with God. And Jesus, again, uh, demonstrated this, and he is our way shower. Charles Fillmore also saw the 12 disciples as uh, metaphysically representing each one of these 12 pathways, these 12 powers of the Christ. And again, it's important to realize that we use these powers, we're not the powers. He believed that each disciple manifested one aspect of the Christ more perfectly than any other and connected to that power. And he also located um, the, uh, the power within a body center, and we'll, we can talk more about that e later. But this morning we're going to talk about the power of order. The power of order 
is the ability to organize, sequence, balance, and adjust. The, the ability to organize, sequence, balance, and adjust. And you'll see how that fits my life and why it fit, the topic fit me so perfectly. So the power of order is represented by James, son of Alpheus. Uh, location is the navel. There are colors assigned to the powers later on is olive green. And it works with love, to, uh, works in conjunction with the power of love to create harmony in our lives. So the way we use these and make them practical to our lives is through denials and affirmations. Meditation, denials and affirmation. So a denial is a release of negative energy and power we have invested in old, worn out negative attitudes or beliefs. It's not that we deny events or circumstances or situations or people that may push our buttons. It's that we release any negative power that that has in our lives. Affirmation is the ability to accept a newer, truer, higher, more correct attitude and belief. It is also the ability to say yes and accept better concepts of divine ideas. An affirmation is an ordered statement of truth through which we condition our consciousness. We establish in consciousness an understanding of a divine principle when we are affirming. Um, a lot of people have trouble with denials and affirmations, or particularly the denial part, but they go hand in hand. It's like peas and carrots or salt and pepper. They go hand in hand. We have to release the negative thoughts, old beliefs, worn out ideas. We release those and then we affirm the new truth. So since the LUT uh, intensive week last July, I've been working with the power of order to declutter my office and my life. Uh, as an engineer, uh, from 40 years worth of drawings, files, notes, books, you can't imagine. So these, uh, these projects, they, they were project files, were very important. So I hung on to them and hung on to them and hung on to them. <laughs> so as I was starting this, um, this uh, presentation for the, for the SDS, and uh, even before, I would open all these files or drawings and start reviewing them. And I would remember all, this, all the activity that went with each one of these projects. Now these projects lasted several years sometimes. Um, they were done concurrently, so there was a lot of projects, a lot of drawings, a lot of files. I would remember that. I'd put it back in the folder, put it back in the box I got it out of and close the folder. I couldn't let go of it. It was, and there's a lot of it. <laughs> So, um, and it's been around in my head that I needed to let go of it. My wife and I moved here five years ago from Nashville, I, and I still, I'm still doing the engineering career here, but a whole lot less, a whole lot less intense. So I couldn't, get, uh, I couldn't let go of the memories attached to all, these, all this work product. So along with affirmation since July, this past July, I've used denials and affirmation to affirm the attachments that I have in this old work product I've affirmed that I'm whole and complete without this stuff. We all know that, but yet it's hard to execute that. So how do we execute that? For me, it's been working with these denials and affirmations and doing that. Uh, it, it doesn't happen overnight, it hasn't happened, I'm not done. I'm a lot further along than I was, but it's a process. So this process, Paul Hazelback, who is a uh, former dean of uh, UWSI, the Unity Spiritual Institute, where we take these classes, he, uh, and a instru metaphysical instructor, he gave us this guideline for how to use denials and affirmations. Um, he would encourage us to say them in the mirror, or before we get out of bed, before my feet hit the floor, I would say denials and these affirmations, um, look myself in the mirror and say them, and then say it at noon, and then before I go to bed at night, say them, and even use it as a mantra before you go to sleep uh, while you're laying in bed. Now, my wife had something to say about that, so I couldn't, <laughs> I didn't do that one so much. It, it, wasn't, put, it wasn't helping her, but it was helping me. So, uh, so repeating these denials and affirmations is the way, along with meditation, is the way to make these, the way to make this principle and all of the 12 powers make them real in your life. So here's, a, uh, here's the, a personal denial I use to release negative attachments to my work product. I release all fears, 
related to eliminating these old work files. I don't know the fear, but subconsciously it's obviously there because I couldn't release it. And then I re release all feelings of lack of self-worth. Any, anything that is, uh, it's an apparent power. It's, we know it's not real, but it feels real. So those were the a combination of those uh, denials that I was using. And then the affirmation uh, that I wrote for myself and affir I affirm and use my ability of order to organize, balance, and declutter my life of old work product files and drawings and uh, you know, all the stuff. But make them succinct and something that's repeatable. Uh, I had a little three by five card on my bedside so I could remember them if I was tired and forgot. But it really makes a difference and it's made a difference in my life. Now I'm not through, I've still got more to do, not as much as I did before. Um, and then there was this, <laughs> Michael. So in the middle of doing, preparing for SDS over the last few weeks, uh, obviously we've had Michael. Um, and then there was this, that's looking out my front door while it was going on. And there was this. If you, you can't hardly see it in this picture, I included this one because there's a storage building with two trees. It's chopped one of the storage buildings in my backyard. And a lot of this old work product was in, was in that building. <laughs> <laughs> so I still have some in my office, but the, the, the work product that was in that building has been decluttered. <laughs> <laughs> so and then one more there was this and this is our center here this is the tree on the roof uh, on the other side right there and then we obviously can see that so as I started processing um, the effect of Michael and I was in the process of preparing this class for SDS I thought about the voices the old voices in my head uh, saying it's all in divine order um, it was almost like God was saying, clutter, I'll show you clutter. <laughs> or other churches saying, I don't know why God would allow Michael to, to damage all of the churches. Uh, did, God didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. So obviously in this sense, we are incorrectly using the term divine order from our new thought understanding. Because using a traditional, ordinary sense, divine order is as if God in the sky, which we know is not there, is dictating what is taking place in our daily life. It's almost like, you know, stirring, well, it goes this way, um, stirring the hurricane. This misunderstanding and use of the divine order leaves one feeling resigned rather than empowered. So there is no such thing as divine order as we ordinarily use it. And this comes from Get Over It. It's a book by Paul Hazelback and Bill uh, Holton. So there is no such thing as we normally use it. So if that's the case, what, what is it? What do we mean by it? Well, again, in unity, what we mean from, um, uh, from the definition by Charles Fillmore, um, it means it's a spiritual law. And you can't read this because it's too small, but I wanted to put it up there. Divine order is a process that we create. It's the law of mind, idea, and expression. Mind, idea, manifestation. It's our third principle in, in uh, more detail, the way it works. So we don't have a choice. We're using this. Everything works first from mind, mind, idea, and then we manifest it. It doesn't happen the other way around, or if it does, we're using it incorrectly according to the metaphysical teachings. And we're all using it whether we know it or not. Everyone is using this law, this spiritual law. Uh, Paul Hazelbeck in, the, in his book says, we cannot not use it. The idea, mind, expression, the manifestation comes after the thoughts. So the more correct way of affirming this is to say, I am divinely ordered. I am divinely ordering. It's a process. So our process, we are creating our world according to the way we use this spiritual principle, mind, idea, expression. 
So it's so appropriate to what is facing us now, not only with the hurricane, what's going on here at our center, the transition, so I am divinely ordering. Say that with me. I am divinely ordering. So it's much more empowering. It's up to us. We create. I always say that there, I don't know if this is an original thought with me or if I read it somewhere, but there should be another word. God, gods, we create. So God is the principle we know in unity. God is principle. God is the principle beyond all, including this spiritual law of mind, idea, expression. So God, gods, and we create. Uh, that's what we have an opportunity to do here. We get the opportunity. We have these opportunities. It's a transition to create. Uh, create our lives and experiences the way we uh, best for us. So during my class, uh, we had to um, uh, invite the students, uh, the classmates, to participate. So it was to demonstrate how we can, uh, different modes of learning and all that. So, we, uh, so I invited the students, to, the classmates, to pause for a minute in meditation and silence and then to create a denial and affirmation for us. So it was very powerful. And I'm going to read those and, and tell you who they are. I'm going to read the affirmation. If you want the full denial and the affirmation from each of these groups, let me know and I'll get it to you. So uh, affirm this with me, you can, if you can read that. Everything is falling into place to create the best and highest path ahead in divine, in divine order. Go back just a minute, Rob, or Steve. So that's from Trish Yancey uh, from Unity of, West, of Palm Beach and Ron Karstetter from Fairfax, Virginia. Okay. Affirm this one with me. I affirm that my community and family will return to wholeness and prosperity. That was, uh, that was created by Linda Powell and Bob Jones from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay. Re re do this one with me. We affirm inner peace that knows no bounds and now our community is coming together in peace. From Dave Cooperberg from San Francisco and Stacy Boros Ross from Thousand Oaks, California. And notice that Stacy was one of the classmates in there and uh, on th this happened, um, we, we all held hands and prayed because of the shooting that occurred in, in, right down the street from her uh, from her community, so uh, it was uh, it was divinely ordering for sure. And next, uh, using divine power of order, we use this opportunity to rebuild, regrow, and strengthen our facility and our community. Uh, Tomas, we called him Tommy, Tommy De Leon from McAllen, Texas. Um, he sang like uh, Freddie Fender, so he was a, a great energy force in the class. Uh, Tom Poloni, uh, Amherst, Massachusetts. Uh, Tom said he would be the first um, LUT ever in his uh, spiritual center in uh, Massachusetts. And Ann Hardipe uh, from St. Louis, Missouri. So all of these guys, it was a great experience. We, you know, it was one of those things you had to almost be there. But I wanted to share that with you to know that the well wishes for our community is coming, you can see, all across the country, just from these uh, nine people. Um, and it's uh, really reassuring to know that we're not alone, that we, uh, we hold hands together like, that, like this, and in these communities, you see all of our communities are we're supporting each other, holding hands. It's, it's divinely ordering. We are creating our reality in the ways that we should be creating it. So again, one more time, affirm with me. I am divinely ordering. And again, let's say it in the we sense. We are divinely ordering. And so it is. Namaste.